Some people regard death by drone as a necessary evil of our post 9 11 world, the way we have to do business against an enemy we can't see, including sometimes Americans who have switched sides. Others see the use of drones by the United States as nothing more than execution by air, without due process, no court, no charges, no trial, and relatively little oversight. What's beyond dispute is this. Drone attacks have become a huge weapon for this country, and this president has made unprecedented use of them. NBC News has obtained a government document that lays out the legal argument to justify the president's use of drones to kill al-Qaeda suspects, including, in some cases, U.S. citizens. Our national investigative correspondent, Michael Isakoff, broke this story and has our report. Drones have been called President Obama's weapon of choice. During his four years as commander-in-chief, U.S. military and CIA drone strikes have accelerated at an unprecedented pace. More than 400 CIA strikes against targets in Pakistan and Yemen, eight times as many as under President Bush. They have been very precise, precision strikes against al-Qaeda and their affiliates. These strikes are legal. Uh, they are ethical and they are wise. But today, new questions about drone strikes targeting American citizens, including Anwar al-Awlaki, born in New Mexico and killed in Yemen in 2011. He allegedly directed the so-called underwear bomber, who tried to blow up an airliner over Detroit in 2009. But al-Awlaki was never charged with a crime. NBC News has obtained this confidential 16-page Justice Department memo that concludes lethal strikes against U.S. citizens who are operational leaders of al-Qaeda are a lawful act of national self-defense. We only take these kinds of actions when um, there's an imminent threat, when capture is not feasible, and when we are confident that we're doing so in a way that's consistent with uh, federal and international law. But the memo appears to allow greater leeway than the administration has publicly acknowledged. It says an imminent threat does not require the United States to have clear evidence that a specific attack on U.S. persons and interests will take place in the immediate future. The ACLU is challenging Obama's drone policy and is suing the U.S. government over Alaki's death on behalf of his family. It is a chilling document. It's, it's, um, you know, it sets out the government's claimed authority to carry out the targeted killing of American citizens, but the limits are really vague and elastic, and it's very easy to see how they could be manipulated. NBC News analyst Michael Leiter, a former top Obama counterterrorism official who worked on the policy, says it reflects the reality of the murky war against al-Qaeda. The nature of intelligence is such that it really is unreasonable to expect that the U.S. will always have specific evidence about a plot. Instead, this allows some flexibility in that these senior leaders are assumed to consistently be been plotting. The architect of the administration's drone policy is White House counterterrorism advisor John Brennan, now the president's nominee to be CIA director. It's this surgical precision, the ability with laser-like focus to eliminate the cancerous tumor called an al-Qaeda terrorist. But as departing defense chief Leon Panetta, a former CIA director, acknowledged this week, choosing targets for such strikes, killing by remote control, you know, is uh, never easy. Catholic, I remember when I first became uh, director of the CIA and, and realized that I was making life and death uh, decisions uh, with regards to our operations. It doesn't come lightly. A bipartisan group of senators is demanding more transparency about the drone strikes targeting Americans, and they're expected to grill Brennan about the subject on Thursday when he appears before the Senate Intelligence Committee at his confirmation hearing to be the next CIA director. Brian? Michael Isikoff, who broke this story in our D.C. newsroom for us tonight. Michael, thanks.